Hey, it's your friendly dental assistant come to talk to you about Porphyromonas gingivalis, right? The pathogen is responsible for periodontitis and inflammation of the gums. How does a dentist determine, right, if you have the infection? How does a dental assistant or a hygienist determine if you have an infection? What do they use? Well, today's video will talk all about that and explain a little bit more about how this pathogen gets from person to person and how it interacts with the body. So how does a dentist or a dental hygienist assess a new patient for this disease? Well, when you come into a dentist as a new patient, one of the things that you probably have heard, maybe in the background or not explicitly stated to you, was something called the periodontal probing, right? And that's when they take this instrument and they measure different areas around the tooth. They kind of push it just into the gums a little bit to see how far the bone is from the tooth. Now you might hear numbers such as one, two, three, four, five, but if you start progressing towards six, seven, eight, that might indicate a more severe form of a disease and an indication of periodontitis. So they look really scary, you know, very proby, it look, looks very, you know, very long, very looking sharp, but it actually doesn't cut or anything. You can see the lines in the picture and these measure the millimeters of where the root of the tooth begins to where the bone is located that is holding the tooth in place. Again, numbers one, two, three are normal and considered healthy. When you kind of get above the four, you're at risk of gingivitis. Higher than that, five, six, seven, we see more periodontitis a form that the gingivalis creates. One thing you should keep in mind as when you are periodontal probing is that mistakes can happen. You don't want to be pushing extremely hard into your patient, nor do you want to be barely pushing in at all. You really want to press enough just to feel around. Now, think about some things that can happen, right? You can have calculus buildup or this plaque buildup that ends up stopping the probe from going the true depth. So that's something that you should keep in mind. And sometimes you need to clean with the techniques that we'll talk about in a little bit later before you probe because you won't get an accurate understanding of, of how far this disease has progressed in the subject. One of the reasons I keep bringing up this periodontal probing technique is because we've already seen from the previous learning modules that Porphyromonas gingivalis right, directly affects bone resorption by activating the immune system of the host and causing you know the bone to be slowly whittled away. Now the more severe the onset of this pathogen in the body, the less bone there is. So the higher the numbers on the periodontal probe. But before all that, the real question is how does that pathogen get there? Is it something that you know you're born with or is it something that you receive or obtain from other individuals? That's a real difficult question. You know, it's prevalent in a lot of periodontal cases, but it's not in all of them, right? Porphyromonas uh, gingivalis, you know, can be and is likely associated with periodontal disease, but it doesn't have to be the only pathogen that's responsible. Let's start with the fundamentals of transmission of pathogens, right? There's three main important things that a pathogen needs so that it can be transmitted to another individual. The first is where is the pathogen coming from, right? It has to be somewhere to get somewhere. That's what we call a reservoir. The reservoir is not coming from children. It's not something that you're born with. So the likely source of this pathogen is adult humans. The second idea for a pathogen to be transmitted is not only where it comes from, but also it has a place to go, right? If a host is to obtain the pathogen, it needs to be able to get there somewhat, somehow. In this scenario, it would be the oral environment, right? The oral microbiome is very exposed to external stimulus. So direct contact is likely from going from one host to another. Now we've talked about the home in which the pathogen 
resides and now there is a susceptible person where it has an open cavity where the pathogen can access but it also needs a mode of transmission so saliva you can find Pophyromonas gingivalis in saliva and as a result many researchers have shown that kissing could be a link to how this pathogen is being spread from individual to individual. Some fun facts that I wanted to talk about uh, is the likely modes of transmission and it's been shown in research that vertical transmission of this pathogen is very rare so you don't have the pathogen being transmissed from mother to daughter. But one thing that's interesting in research nowadays is the looking at spouses to determine horizontal transmission, right? The adult human passing this pathogen along to another host. And what they found out is that 30 to 75% of spouses actually share their pathogen with each other, especially in, a, in those committed relationships. You have to remember that just because you have the pathogen doesn't indicate disease. This is a very opportunistic pathogen that depends on the oral microbiome, on an individual's ability to resist the pathogen, as well as their oral hygiene. So now we understand how we test for the pathogen and, and the disease progression. What do we do to stop it? Well, the answer is somewhat obvious. In the less severe cases, you, you really can do is all you normally do. Brush your teeth, you know, twice a day, that's recommended, as well as flossing, which is very important for this specific pathogen. Remember, flossing gets below the gum line, whereas brushing does not. And that is the area where Porphyromonas gingivalis does its best work in that anaerobic environment where it can cause the inflammation of the gums. So removing that plaque and that other bacteria down in those pockets with floss is going to be key to limiting the progression of this disease. But we're all human and oral hygiene can only take you so far. No matter what you do brushing and flossing, you know, life is life and they will always find a way. So one extra thing you can do is go to your dentist, you know, twice a year if possible. I know COVID's, you know, causing that to be a little bit of a struggle recently, but don't worry getting a little extra using a little bit tools done used by professionals will help remove that extra bacteria and keep your microbiome nice, happy, and healthy. Now at a certain point, you might have built up enough plaque and it's kind of progressed to such a point where you're starting to get higher and higher in these periodontal probe numbers. Remember, it's not just the level of the numbers that's important, but the progression. So maybe the first time you come in, you were at threes and fours, and then the next couple months, you know, a year that just went by, and you've gone up to eight or six or seven, right? So that indicates progression of disease, and it's a good time in which you should probably get a procedure called scaling and root planing performed. Now, Usually when you go to the dentist and get a cleaning, it's above the gums, they clean the teeth, they remove as much plaque and bacteria as possible, especially some of the harder substances. However, there is that time after they take those radiographs that you might notice that underneath the gum line, there is a little bit more plaque down there that needs to be you know, removed so that your gums and your teeth can heal a little bit. So scaling root planing is when they numb you up and then go underneath that gum line and remove some of that extra, extra bacteria. Now, if you look on the internet, sometimes they suggest that there are antibiotics and medications that will be used to help limit the amount of pathogens in the microbiome, in the oral microbiome. But I feel that's a little bit more rare. Uh, we don't want to overdo it with medications so that we disrupt the balance of your oral microbiome. And that, if you recall from the website, that disruption in the oral microbiome leads to that increased severity of disease and easier access for the gingivalis to cause that inflammation and succeed in that environment. Now, as a general dentist, dental assistant that uh, I've spent most of my time in, we don't go to the next level. If you have progressed far enough where it's past the scaling and root planing to be effective, what they might do is send you off to a periodontist. Now, periodontists are specialists in this type of disease, and what they will do is create do surgery in which they 
help restore some of that bone or level it off to remove the amount of area in which the bacteria can attack and and take away from so that you have time to build up a little bit of resistance kind of reheal that bone tissue the last component after you've done all this treatment is very important because recurrence is very common especially if you're not having that oral hygiene and oral care that your dentist or specialist prescribes so you've got to keep in mind you have to be super vigilant in the next coming months as your gums heal as your bone kind of starts healing up and your your teeth are getting used to the idea that that bacteria and those pathogens were removed keep in mind that you're going to be using mouthwash again active oral hygiene such as brushing your teeth flossing maybe you will be going to the general dentist a couple more times maybe two to three months rather than every six months Remember, just because you have gingivitis or periodontitis does not mean we're at the most severe case. The goal is that we keep our bone tissue from being reabsorbed because without the bone, our teeth cannot be held in place and that's when they get wiggly and possibly fall out. So in that case, we might need implants or something to get those teeth back in there and allow you to continue chewing those uh, hearty steaks and burgers. We've talked about a lot, right? We've talked about Profyromonas gingivalis. We've talked about the disease that it caused. We've talked about the instruments that professionals use to diagnose that disease and test the severity of it. But now it's about time to go. So I hope you're looking forward to the next video and I'll see you guys later.